We're swimming only just a few weeks away. I thought I'd do a video on what is what it is that you need when you go swimming in the pool. So with so much out there, I know when I first started, I didn't understand what it all meant, what it was all used for. So hopefully this video will help you to understand what you need and why you need it. So we'll look at each one in turn and I'll go through the pros and cons of each of them. So you can decide for you whether you'll need them to help develop your swim and get ready for your first triathlon or any triathlon that you might be doing this year. Okay, so let's start with the kickboard. So some of the, the, the pros for a kickboard, it's mainly used to, to focus your workout on your legs, your hips and your core muscles. So it will help you develop all those muscles uh, while giving your upper body a rest. The trouble with them, however, is it doesn't allow for any work on balance and body rotation for the upper body. So although it's good for the lower body part of it, which still is very important, be mindful that to overuse it, you will compromise balance and um, body rotation. Then we've got some fins. Now you get different fins, you get long fins um, and short fins. I I've gone with the short fins and really what they help you for is develop speed. They allow for a quicker, narrower kick. Uh, you'll, be, you'll use them mainly with, uh, when doing s technique drills and they help in maintaining the body's position and momentum going forward. So again, a great addition and you can use those with the kickboard as well and that will, that will help as well. So again, a great addition to, to your swimming. The trouble with them, however, again, like everything, if you overuse it, um, it will mask any issues that you have with your upper body uh, propulsion. So again, use it, but don't overuse it. Okay, then we're going to look at uh, hand paddles. So these, you get different kinds of ones. The ones I've got are for, they, they cover the full hand. So you get ones that only cover half the hand. So I'll talk about the ones that I've got. Um, and basically they help you build connection between your hands and your hips. Uh, they help correct uh, entry technique um, by maintaining, so it's forcing you to maintain a higher elbow as well. And it improves your power um, in the upper body as well. So again, another great addition to, to training. I, I would um, also just say on these that for sort of, if you're very new into swimming and you haven't yet built up sort of any swim strength, I would maybe avoid these straight away until you have got a bit more of upper body strength because the trouble with these as well is they can, they can lead to shoulder injury as well, which I, I have had before. So, um, don't do your whole swim set with them. Again, use them for drills uh, and avoid injuries in, in the shoulder, like I said. Okay, so let's look at the pool boy. So what this does, it promotes leg buoyancy and reduces drag. So if you find uh, when you first start swimming, your, your legs will be sinking and your upper body will be almost above the water. Uh, your head's probably looking more forward than down. So what this will do is it will help um, counteract that. It will pop your legs back up. So you're looking now down at the, the bottom of the pool, so making you more streamlined. And um, it, it'll just enforce that sort of muscle memory and get you in the habit of swimming um, in the correct position. So it also builds up upper body strength, which is, which is a great addition. So as you become more confident in the, in the swim, uh, you, you'll find you'll, you'll get quicker, but also you, you're probably having to use your legs a lot less. And some people tend to not kick as much and wet during the swim because they're wanting to save their legs for the bike. I personally, I, I kick throughout the swim, um, but everyone's different and you'll find your way of doing things. But like I said, that, that will help promote that, um, that buoyancy and keeping your legs up. So in effect, it's like, it's, it's simulating wearing a wetsuit. So probably, um, with the wetsuit, just on that, if, if you're going to be doing a triathlon that's only swim base or without a wetsuit, this isn't probably going to help as much because, like I said, it does simulate wearing a wetsuit. So um, just something to bear in mind that if you're doing a pool swim, um, although this is good to sort of when you're first learning uh, to get to maintain that body position, don't overdo it on this as well because it, 
when when you do go swim without it, um, you could you could find yourself um, going back into your old ways. So it will also help you if you've got less endurance. So if you're just starting out and you're sort of building up the volume, and you're not a confident swimmer, this will actually help you to increase your um, tr endurance training, so you'll be able to swim for longer um, in turn, and then getting. Uh, more confident and stronger swimmer as well, so allowing you to have longer sessions in the pool. But like I say, it could also negatively affect body rotation and alignment as well. So just watch out for that as well. Don't overuse them, but it is, it's a great tool to use and definitely would recommend for all levels of swimming. Another part of my kit is the snorkel. So what this will do, and just firstly, before I go on to that, not all swimming pools will let you use a snorkel that I've found. So um, just be wary that if you are at a local pool, you might not be able to use the snorkel. I don't actually know what the reason is. I just know when I've worked away and I've gone into uh, pools that I, I wouldn't normally go to, they, do, they said no snorkels are allowed. So um, just bear that in mind. But what it, if you are allowed to use it, um, it will help you um, with body alignment, maintaining a proper body alignment. It will also, um, it, you can practice your head and body position uh, and without having to turn your head to breathe. So it just maintains that neutral body the whole time. Um, and also it will help you to, well, it, it helps you, your respiratory muscles and breathing in and out. So it, it's, it's good for that. Uh, what I would say is you, if you are, if you've never used a snorkel, you can at first feel a bit claustrophobic because your head's constantly underwater with the snorkel. And this particular one, it actually, it, it's quite a contraction that it fits over like this. Then if you can imagine you've got your goggles on and if you if you like to swim with the swim cap, you've got the swim cap on, so you can feel quite claustrophobic. So just, um, build it up, I would say, in each session. So just maybe do a couple of lengths and it just, just go at your own pace and see how you feel. But it is definitely um, a piece of kit that's worth having. And what I like to do with it, I find, is I use the snorkel a lot when I'm doing kick drills on the um, on the kickboard. And it allows for me just to, to keep constant, um, you know, body position. And I'm just kicking up and down the lanes all the time without having to turn my head to breathe or without having to take on a load of water because of um, holding my head above the kickboard all the time. So would recommend, but again, it's sort of, I wouldn't class this as an essential bit of training kit. So another, and this is my choice. I've gone with, and I, I swim with um, buoyancy shorts. So basically it's uh, it's wetsuit, um, wetsuit shorts. and. They help just increase your buoyancy, which in turn increases your speed as well. And it's just something I've always um, felt comfortable swimming in. Uh, you'll never, you'll never see me in a speedo, that's for sure. So um, I, the, these are my go-to um, swimming shorts. Um, so I do recommend them, especially again, maybe when you're starting out because of the buoyancy, they do naturally pop your legs up. You won't, be, you won't be able to swim in those in. And in an Ironman event, as an example, if it's a non-wetsuit non swim, uh, they're not allowed. So bear that in mind as well. If you're constantly swimming in them, occasionally I'll mix it up and I will go and I'll swim in my tri shorts as well. So um, that then obviously takes away all the buoyancy and it replicates me swimming in my tri suits should it be a non-wetsuit swim, which I've only ever had once in Florida. Okay, so then the um, another Another tool I'm going to talk about is an uh, ankle strap. So these I, I use only occasionally, very occasionally, to be honest. And basically they, they'll go over your ankles and it completely takes out the ability to kick. So you won't be able to kick. So your, your legs now will naturally drop and fall into the water. So you'll have that drag that we talked about in the beginning. However, what they are very good for is building up your, your upper body strength, your core muscles, because really what, what you're meant to do is try and maintain a body position. So you are meant to bring your legs up and swim as if you, you would um, without it. So it just limits the, or takes away the, the ability to kick. So I would say if you're beginning, don't bother about this. This is more, more of an advanced piece of kit for training. Um, but again, it is a piece of kit that I use for swimming nonetheless. 
So probably the most important piece of kit that I haven't mentioned yet, and um, I say purposely for last because it is the most essential when swimming, is goggles. So I've got a number of different pairs here, and to be honest, for me, Roka are the best goggles out there, in my opinion, and, and my wife's opinion. I'm going to go into some of the, the reasons why, but uh, the, the first one really is the fact that they're a lot bigger, and I don't know if you can see that too well, but they're a lot bigger than what the normal goggles would be, and I'll, I'll put a, a pair on so you can see. Uh, but they do, they they cover a larger area than the normal ones. So the normal goggles, and I don't have a pair of them because I, I just don't use the smaller ones, but the smaller ones, they, they tend to come sort of in the eyes there. So I just found they squashed. They, they also tend to give me a bit of a headache as well. And they come in various tints. So I've got a clear pair, which I use. I, I use these all in the pool, to be honest, but I use a clear pair. I, I use one with a blue tint and I use one with sort of a darker tint. And I, I use the darker tint just because some days it's really sunny and where, where I swim, it's it's all surrounded by glass and the sun gets through and there's a big glare. So I use those very occasionally when it's really sunny. So, um, but if you go onto their website, they've actually got a brilliant um, website for the goggles when you're choosing them and they've got all the different tints that are available and they show you what they look like with, um, with and without them and you can decide which tints are best for you. But definitely for the pool, I would say a clear tint works best and um, they last forever. So uh, I'm probably getting about a year out of each um, pair of goggles that I have and that swimming when, they, when we were allowed to swim was three times, four times a week, so all year round. So they don't fog up like most goggles do, and definitely my go-to pair of goggles. Then a pair of goggles that I've yet to try and I'm so desperately wanting to try is the Form Swim goggles. So if you don't know these, um, I'm literally dying to, to wear them. I got them for Christmas and I, I just can't wait to use them. So they give you all your swim metrics. Now, I think even if you're a beginner or an advanced swimmer, that's great. But if you want to know how, how fast you're going, they even tell you your heart rate, they tell you your distance, or all, all in the corner of your eye. If you look on their website, it goes into detail about them. But um, for me, that, that's brilliant. And you can use them in the open water as well. So that's even better for me because well, normally if, I, if I'm doing a, an open water swim, I have to stop, I look at my watch, see the distance or the time, and then I go again. So one, I'm losing all that momentum, um, but also if I'm swimming in the seas and I sort of, I, I just swim down and up, um, but I never really know how far and how long I've been swimming for, unless like I say, I stop and look at my watch, which sort of um, breaks momentum up. So now, or eventually when I do get to use them, I'll be able to see in the corner of my eye what's going on, how fast I'm going, maintain a pace. I don't know if you're allowed to race them. I probably wouldn't race in them just because I wouldn't want to lose them because they're not, they, they, well, they're not cheap at all, to be honest, but um, definitely for training, I think it's going to be a great addition to my swimming and allow me to sort of, like I say, know, know my metrics while I'm doing it. So hopefully that's all helped. Um, there's loads of different kits out there. I'm sure I've missed um, a few bits and pieces. Like I said in the beginning, you know, everything that you can use is, you know, just build it up slowly. If, if you're brand new into swimming, then definitely look into it a bit more. Reach out to me for, for any more questions you have. I'm sure there's a load more pros and cons. Well, there's in fact loads more pros and cons, but just for the sake of keeping it sort of short and sweet and of interest for you. Um, I just I just named a few. So hopefully that's helped. Please let me know in the comments if it has helped you or if you want to add anything else so that anyone reading them will be able to see and learn from you as well, then that would be great. If you have found this video useful, please like and subscribe. That would really mean a lot to me because that way I can reach more people and ultimately what it's all about is helping people get into triathlon. Thank you for watching.